Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Today, we've got a a lot. RFK Jr. announced his running mate officially for the third party ticket as an independent. Uh, We'll get into that. The state of Florida also has banned social media for young children. There are varying opinions on that as well. Uh, We'll be sure to dive into that. But first, records show that the 984-foot cargo ship that crashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge early yesterday morning, named the Dolly, had actually been involved in an accident in 2016, and inspections as recent as last year came back showing deficiencies. So the 2016 incident occurred as that ship was leaving a port in Belgium when it struck a stone loading pier and suffered damage to its stern. And it also apparently recorded a deficiency for its propulsion and auxiliary machinery, plus its gauges and thermometers during its latest inspection in Chile just last year. Now, the ship is owned by a Singaporean company called Synergy Marine Group, which boasts, I'm sure, I'm sure this is totally unrelated, but it does boast on their website a diversity and inclusion initiative where they claim that Hiring for diversity alone is not enough. It's not enough to just hire based off of skin color or who you sleep with. That's not enough. We want to ensure that our employees can bring their full selves to work, that they can belong in the fullest sense to the community inside the organization. Mm. Don't you love to hear it when the ship is just, you know, has total mechanical malfunctions and meltdowns and ends up in the collapse of a gigantic bridge, which, as it turns out, economists are now warning that the collapse of the bridge will be a major disaster for the country, disrupting $80 billion in cargo that travels in and out of the port of Baltimore. Uh, Also important to note that prior to the bridge's collapse, the port was actually the leading import and export site for cars and light trucks and is linked to nearly 140,000 jobs in the country. But hey, don't worry. Everything is fine because Joe Biden is on the case. He's on it. All right. He gave a press conference yesterday on the matter where he said that he had taken the train across that very same bridge many, many times. At about 1.30, container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware on a train or by car. Um, <clears throat> just a little problem with what he said there. Uh, there hasn't ever been a train on that bridge. Nope. Not many, many times. Not even one time. Not one. Uh, So Dementia Joe strikes again, I guess. Did you travel that bridge by plane as well, Joe? Are your arms tired from flapping across the bridge? And the sad part is you never really can tell if he's lying or if it's just the dementia. Everything that comes out of his mouth, that's so preposterous. Like, I'm pretty sure that that one was a dementia, but honestly, I don't know anymore. He makes up so many stories about gangsters named Corn Pop and black kids touching his leg hair and his own son dying in combat when he didn't and all sorts of crazy things that you just never know what to believe coming out of Joe Biden's mouth anymore. And I just, I go back to this all the time. Imagine for a moment, let's let's just say that special counsel Robert Hur hadn't decided that Joe Biden shouldn't be tried in a court over his classified documents case because, remember, he wrote, well, a jury would be sympathetic. He's just a well-meaning elderly old man. That's what they would think. They would just be sympathetic to his old ass. Okay, imagine Joe Biden in a courtroom answering a prosecutor's questions on the stand. If he answered every single question with I don't recall, would you believe him? Would you know what to believe? Would you know if he was lying or if he simply just didn't remember because he's so far gone? I would. It's really plausible. I'd believe him. And I guess it's because of all of these gaffes, all the lies, because we're watching a man who has just devastated the country for over three years on every front just deteriorate before our very eyes. The Democrats are understandably very scared. They're scared of Donald Trump. That's clear. It's why they've waged like 10 billion indictments and legal measures against him. But it's fascinating because they're also scared of RFK Jr., who just announced his new running mate on the third party ticket. This is Nicole Shanahan, 
who is a wealthy Silicon Valley tech entrepreneur. And, you know, all the headlines are like, oh, he, she reportedly shares his views on childhood vaccines, which, by the way, I do, too, for the record. And an op-ed in USA Today said, as running mates go, they're made for each other. She shares his odd views and can pay for his platform, feeding him validation and attention. As politicians, they have no chance to win, but every chance to tilt November's election, likely in Donald Trump's favor. Oh, no. Which, of course, echoed former Biden mouthpiece turned MSNBC host, still Biden mouthpiece, Jen Psaki's complaints days before RFK had even announced his VP pick. Listen to her whining about third party candidates. I don't want to be in RFK Jr.'s brain uh, where mm -hmm. he doesn't believe in okay. science and all sorts of other mm -hmm. things. Right. But I will say, Mika, mm -hmm. I, I was nodding along as Tom was just talking. I think this mm -hmm. is the biggest challenge. There, There is unquestionably Trump has a, a broad support in his base, as we've just been yeah. discussing. And we've seen that play out in the primary. That's the only piece, though, we know at this point. He has problems among independents and problems with an expanded electorate. But these third party candidates are a huge, huge, huge problem. And there's are a number they? of them. If you look at RFK Jr., it's the name recognition issue, as Tom was just talking uh -oh. about. What's and the there issue? are still states in this country, uh, obviously, I mean, Georgia is one of them, I okay. will name, where the Kennedy name is beloved, right? Where people may just not <laughs> right. still, where they may just not know a lot about the fact that he is an anti-vaxxer oh, who's a conspiracy no. theorist. Oh, they no. don't know that yet. So this is something, there is an aggressive effort that the campaign has been working with the Democratic National Committee on uh -huh. to run on this. But it needs to be broad. People need to be shouting it from the rooftops because this is the one of the biggest threats um, to Joe Biden being reelected is uh -oh. these third party candidates. If you look at Michigan, Mika, and I know uh, Sen uh, Alicia, Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on later. I almost called her yeah. senator. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on <laughs> later. Michigan is a state where RFK, I think, is polling at 10 percent. Right. And so this is a place oh, where threat. Joe Biden needs to win. And RFK Jr. is making a real threat to that. Oh, no. She keeps using the word threat. Oh, gosh, threat. He's a threat. I don't know. Alternatively, just maybe try sucking less. Like, you keep talking about a threat to Joe Biden's campaign, a threat to Joe Biden's uh, candidacy. Maybe instead of presuming voters are too stupid to know who RFK Jr. is, even though you guys have been slandering him since he decided to run against the machine and that they might, oopsie, accidentally vote for the wrong guy. They just didn't know. They're too stupid. That's what, she, that's what she's saying, right? Over in Georgia? Well, they're unfortunately, Mika, they're too stupid to know who it is that they're voting for. Why is he a threat? Why? Just try sucking less. Because I got to tell you, any third party candidate, any other candidate, period, wouldn't be a threat if you were good at your jobs. If you had bothered to secure the border or, I don't know, withdrawn from a Afghanistan correctly or kept gas prices down or stopped letting violent criminals back out into our streets or not gotten us involved in a proxy war with Russia. It's like it's really simple. If you don't suck, other candidates shouldn't be a threat. None of them. None of them. You want to talk about RFK being a threat? You don't need RFK to be a threat. Donald Trump is already up in the polls against Joe Biden. Not all of them, but some of them. That's, that's because of you. You suck. You're not doing your job. Otherwise, what's the issue? It's just fascinating to see. Oh, my gosh. He's a threat. He's a threat. No, you guys just really suck at your jobs and you deserve to all be fired. And honestly, that would be a benevolent thing to do is just fire you because some of you, quite frankly, belong in prison. All right. We got to take a quick break. Uh, we will be back with more. You're not going to want to miss this panel. And um, when we come back, I want to talk about the latest Trump indict. I know we need a flow chart of all the different indictments against Donald Trump. And uh, this is the Alvin Bragg case. We'll get into that when we return. Welcome to the show, Matthew Marsden, Belize TV contributor and actor and producer extraordinaire, along with it's his first time on the show. We have Adam Johnson, who may look familiar because he is, in fact, the lectern guy. That's him. Adam, iconic. How do you feel about the fact that you like that this is a historic 
picture here of you. It's, uh, you know, it's nice. I will be remembered for a very long time. My kids love the memes and the jokes, <laughs> you know, and you don't get to pick what you remember for. I was hoping it was like curing cancer or something, but right. I had this picture instead. So lean into it, you know. And can we just state for the record, you picked it up and moved it, what, like 30 feet or something? Yes. It was sitting out in the open. It was not in someone's office. I didn't yeah. break a door down to get it. Right. It was sitting in the open. I picked it up, moved it about 30 30 feet, put yeah. it in the middle of the room and left it there. And left it there. And and you were charged with what? Felony theft. But how do you <laughs> so how do you how do you steal something if you leave it in the building where it is? They said that I converted it to my use. So if you convert someone else's property to use it, then that is theft. So the next time you use a pen at the post office, a federal building, and you fill something out, you are technically stealing from the federal government. So really, they were just mad because the memes were epic. Yes. I embarrassed them. There is an right. ivory tower, and I made jokes about them, and they were not very happy about it. And what was all of your, what were your, what was your sentencing? I, I know this, but I want the audience, I've, I've actually repeated it before, but I want the audience to hear it from you. Well, I have fantastic attorneys, Dave Bigney, Dan Eckhart, always plug them because they're amazing people. Um, we got the felony dropped, the misdemeanor dropped, we got one misdemeanor left, I got 75 days in federal prison, $5,000 fine, 200 hours of community service, a year of supervised release. And also a condition that I cannot profit off of my likeness, my name, my image for five years. Uh, which is, of course, really what it was all about. Well, they wanted a lifetime ban on it, where anytime I ever wanted to do a speaking event, I could not profit off of it. The attorneys got it down to five years. Wow. So anytime I come out and do this, it's always on my dollar, always on my dime. But I think it's important to come speak and let people know what the government is willing to do to silence you. Well, it's a great day for you to be here because, um, it, you know, and honestly, we didn't even plant like you have been on the calendar for a very long time. It just so happens that today uh, in preparation for the Donald Trump trial set to begin, begin April 15th in the criminal case brought on by the Manhattan D.A. Alvin Bragg, uh, a judge yesterday issued a gag order against Donald Trump, which, of course, he's not now not going to be able to speak publicly about witnesses, prosecutors and jurors. Now, the judge says, well, previous statements Trump has made about individuals involved in the case were threatening, inflammatory and degrading, causing a sufficient risk to the administration of justice, which I, I'm look. It's a coincidence, OK, that this same judge um, actually has donated to Joe Biden's uh, 2020 presidential campaign. OK, that's all just a coincidence here. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that they don't want Donald Trump to embarrass them. We're, we live in a banana republic. And, uh, you know, I don't think that anyone, any any sane person at this point debates that. I think we all know we see the weaponization of the alphabet agencies. We see that they don't want people speaking out. They they do ridiculous things to people. I mean, I'm just sitting there. After you were saying that, I'm like, I'm committing a felony every time I go shopping. <laughs> yeah, I'm around Tom Thumb and I'm putting my things in there. And so oh, the FBI is going to come up and they're going to be like, stop, you are having that for your own use. That's 70 days in jail. I'm like, but it's just a banana. Not even a banana. A banana. A banana. A banana. <laughs> I, I'm glad that you have a sense of humor about this. I have to. I'm raising a family, and if I spent my days angry, upset, I mean, what's I do with my family? Right. Additionally, there are people who have it much worse than I do who are still in sure. prison who didn't even show up that day. This is Enrico Tario. Yeah. 21-year sentence. Yeah. And they are actually going back trying to give them more time because the judges in their cases, this is this is Biggs, this is Ontario, they didn't, the judge didn't give them the full sentence. So now the prosecutors are appealing it, going back saying, we want more time. Golly. Nearly two decades isn't enough, I guess, for not showing up no. uh, when and it it's comes to Enrique. It's because they are encouraging men and women to speak up and actually not just have convictions, act on them as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what scares them. Yeah. I, I refer to this all the time, but it's just so true that whenever Donald Trump had said, you know, they're not coming after me, they're coming after you, I'm just standing in the way. I mean, you're you're see yeah, they are coming after him as well with, you know, the gag order and the, the just these 34 counts of business records, falsifying business records in relation to the alleged hush money that he paid Stormy Daniels. I mean, this this is really what we've been reduced to is um, charging him for falsifying business records because he didn't categorize a payment correctly. 34 counts. Well, I mean, the, the other thing that is completely frustrating, and I think that 
there is a concerted effort to enrage people, to get people mad. I think that that's what they're trying to do because you see that you can go and loot a store in California yeah. and you're not going to get that. They're letting them out there. You're not going to get any kind of crimes accused. You're not going to be accused of anything. They, as we said the other day, they've dropped the belt and nothing mm -hmm. uh, for, for common criminals. And you can't even say that anymore. I mean, even if you say, like, I don't like what he says, and that's somehow in this woke world, like, massively offensive uh, and hates speech. So, I mean, this is where we go and we've got one set of laws for one people and another set of laws for another set of people. And I don't have to tell you who those people are. And what it's all about is shutting you up mm -hmm. so that you will never get out there. And um, it's kind of like, you know, like with, with the lions, they'll kind of like separate the zebras off or the gazelles off to one and then they'll get on the one. That's what they're doing. And, and we spoke about it a little bit outside is that part of the issue is conservatives do not back their own people. If there was mass protests, right, if there were mass gatherings of people saying we're not going to accept this, then they would stop. Mm. But they just feel like they can do whatever they want. And you know what? They can. Yeah, they can. Well, I, I do think that there are a lot of conservatives, too, who feel like they're in quite a predicament because they're they see what happened to January Sixers and they're like, anytime there's ever a planned protest, they're like, don't show up. It's the feds. Don't do it. They're going to try to rile you up. They're going to try to start something. They're going to throw you in prison. And so now nobody wants to show up because they're scared of what happened to people like you and people like Enrique Tario. That was the goal. Right. That was the goal. So if there's every time to say mission accomplished, right. it, it is now for them. Yeah. So I get this question all the time. Every time I'm asked this, what am I supposed to do? Because you saw what happened to you. Right. Do we, how do we protest? Yeah. And I say, you protest with your money. We need to focus on dual economies. Public mm -hmm. Square is a great example of this. Mm -hmm. We need to put our money where our actual convictions are. And that's how we act. And it's also locally. Um, there is this idea that we should abandon co institutions, colleges, you know, all these programs. Are they going away? No. Mm -hmm. College will always be the place you go to get those higher level jobs. They're not going away. The only way to actually win is not to abandon institutions, but to usurp them, to take them back. And that means telling your kids, teaching your kids, you are going to have to go out and be the generation who corrects course for us. Because the people before us didn't do it. They sat by and just did nothing. Yeah. I So, okay, so talking about... Um Kids, Let, let's get into this next story here. So earlier this week, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed legislation prohibiting children younger than 14 from having any social media accounts saying, which, of course, I completely agree with him that social media is harmful to their development and to their mental health. Now, obviously, um, there are others who say this is this is totally with with. This is not within the scope of the government's job. This is a parental issue. And I just I have really mixed feelings about this because I, I do think that children should be away from social media. My children do not have. Well, my younger child is three, so he definitely doesn't have a phone um, or an iPad or anything like that. But my older child is 11, mm -hmm. almost 12. And there, I, like, I, I don't even have a timeline as to when he's going to get a phone or an iPad or anything like that because it's just entirely inappropriate for children to be on social media. So I know that as a parent. And so this feels like it's like this feels like a win. But then it's like, I don't know. It just it it feels like an overreach of government. And I, this is, I love Ron DeSantis. I feel like anytime I'm talking, I'm, anytime I'm criticizing Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump, I have to be like, I love the guy. <laughs> but I thought it would be an interesting conversation of, is this, is this an overreach of the state telling you what you can or cannot do with your children? Well, I, uh, I actually got into this online, which I probably shouldn't, uh, and I'm conflicted as well, but... By the way, hold on. Matthew Marsden is the greatest parenting expert because he has one billion children. <laughs> <laughs> one billion and five. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that, uh, unfortunately, you're in a situation where parents are not uh, monitoring their kids for the most part. And I think that something like... Um, TikTok is is very very damaging. I mean, it, it's it's very different in China to the one that we've got here. I think for young women, uh, it's destroying their sense of of self. I think for men, they they don't know it's gateway to porn. All this, so 
I would come down on the side of, yes, I think it's a good thing to ban it for kids, although I don't like that. I wish that we lived in a different world. I, I also disagree with the libertarian, and I'm, for the most part, I'm on the side of libertarians, uh, but I don't think that everything is okay. I don't think that everything should be allowed because, I mean, clearly we have restrictions on alcohol and, and other other things that we know are damaging to kids who their brains aren't formed properly. Mm -hmm. So I... I really do think that it's a good thing. Uh, my, the school that my kids go to, there's no social media. It's a social media blanket. And I know that you love that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that that – because what you – Hold on. Just explain to them what you mean by that. You guys, all the families who enter the school have to sign something saying we will not allow our children to have social yeah, media. Our kids will not have social media. So what you don't have is one kid that has it, someone right. that doesn't, yes. and then they're like oh. – And listen, we, we – That drives me nuts. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's hard for the kids, Ruin right? it for all of us. So it, none of my kids have social media. Not a single one. I have a 17-year-old, 15, 14, 11, and 8. None of them have it. They will not have it as long as I'm in my house. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. Yeah. And it's because I know what is out there. Right. And they're minors at the end of it. They don't have the same rights that I have. And that's just kind of the end of it. What concerns me about the bill is what is social media? Right. Is this online gaming? Does this extend to Fortnite? Does this extend to, to playing Modern Warfare with your friends? How far does this bill get to reach? So overreach is something I always consider when the government institutes a new policy that controls more. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if the idea is to protect children... I'm always for it. Me too. Good start place. Me, Good right. place. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's why it's like, it feel like this, it's a win for kids, period. Yes. Right? Like this is a win for children. Um, you just worry about how it will be used against us later on in other areas. Well, that's maybe. where we are, right? I mean, we every, right. every single thing that goes through, you're like, how are they going to, number one, what do they really mean by it? Like, are they yeah. really, go, like, I would look at that initially and go, not with Ron DeSantis, but with some of the other stuff they've put through, like about TikTok. Are they really doing this to TikTok or are they trying to shut down Elon Musk? Oh, right. Right. Is that really what they're trying to do? Because the, the Democrats have recently have done nothing. They clearly do not care about kids. They clearly don't care about things like the border and, and, and anything that is human based like that they say they do but they don't so it's a sad place that we're at where we look and we say well what where are they going with this what is the real uh, uh with Ron DeSantis it's slightly different because he's great I believe him. he's yeah. he's yeah. totally great yes he's this consistent. Is, yes he's consistent. he is so consistent. I get it and, and and I get that as well it's difficult but at the end of the day it's destroying kids. It is. I mean, TikTok is the only them. propaganda site that is not controlled by U.S. intelligence. It's the only reason that the government's talking about it. That is all. So I, I like that you brought that up. Um, so I want to, I'm going to play here. We, we have this thing that you may not know, Adam. Um, we call it welfare check, where people can call in and uh, voice their opinions on certain things that we're talking about. You know, if they hate me, that's fine, too. They can let us know at 888-969-5113. Uh, and we had a particular call talking about when we were discussing the uh, supposed TikTok ban or proposed TikTok ban. Um, and this is what he had to say. The one thing I did want to say was the, the subject of TikTok I know that you're just dead set against it. You don't like it, but I, I think don't like that TikTok is what is they're what he's trying saying. to do with the ban TikTok ban is a Trojan horse. I think if we allow them to censor or eliminate or ban TikTok, then what platform is next? Anytime mm -hmm. we give these shit bags, <laughs> like this any guy. kind of a, <laughs> no. a little he's bit of room people. to come in and abuse that power. The, I, I know that you're, you're addressing the, the, the child stuff that, mm -hmm. that these kids are accessing through TikTok. But on the flip side of that, uh, the responsibility is the parents. The parents should be doing their damn job and being parents and not allowing that I access totally to the kids. It's so I there's nothing right. that I yeah I, there's nothing that I disagree with him on there um, the TikTok ban to your point Adam so if we could root out whether or not it is an an actual national security risk which I would say it is not just because it's controlled by the CCP um, but because they are our children are in a mental health crisis because of that app, 
I feel like you could make the argument that it's a national security risk. Now, what we found out later on the TikTok ban is that the way that it was written, of course, gives them the ability to get rid of like any social media or website. So it was absolutely a Trojan horse. Yes, everything is. Every bill always is. Yeah, yeah. It's a slippery slope. I think the other issue we're looking at with DeSantis and talking about all this is conservatives have this point of always saying conservatives never really do anything. They're always talking about something to do things. DeSantis actually does things. Mm -hmm. When he puts his boots on the ground, he gets things done. So we can't sit here and say Republicans aren't doing anything. DeSantis is doing something. Maybe we should let it play out because someone is finally pushing back in the areas that we do want pushback. And someone has to make the hard decisions. So we can sit here and convince left and right all day long about it. But here is a conservative who is actually has his interest in children and taking care of them and doing something about it. Yeah. Well, there's a, the, the other issue that gets me is why do we need these giant bills? Like, why are they always like, do you remember, like, you've got, yeah. you got, you got, to, what is it? I was going to do your Nancy Pelosi. Well, Nancy, you, do you, this you got to, you got to, like, pass it before you can read it. We have to pass the bill so we can find out what's in it. There you go. <laughs> so why isn't this bill three pages long? Right. Why? That's I mean, like, it's, it's, what, what, which, what was this one? Like 600 pages or it's something? It's just giant and nobody reads it. Everyone's like, ah, oh, whatever. So it's that, that to me, again, it's kind of like a great analogy of government, right? It's just way too big mm-hmm. and way too complicated. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Yes. It should be stripped down and every American should know and be able to know what is in that bill mm-hmm. instead of like, hey, listen, this is a bill about healthcare, but let's just take over all student loans, right? Like, we need to demand this of them or we need to say, look, it's going to be, I'd love it if they had like a five page maximum of any bill, right? Like that's it. It's got to be five pages, Mm -hmm. right? You should be able to um, uh, explain it in a PowerPoint and that's it. And, And just strip it all the way down so they can stop being so shady and slimy. I mean, we're really doing this. Like American citizens are saying this all the time. Like what, why are you betraying us constantly? Right. You would have loved my speech on January 6th. Um, they never talked about it. I actually gave a speech behind that lectern and it covered all three of those things. No more treason, no more traitors, and we're voting on one budget item at a time. Yeah. And I think it solves everything. It does. I think it just solves everything. Entirely reasonable. Um, okay, so wh- I, I know we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to talk about one more win over in Florida when it comes to protecting children when we return. <laughs> We have an update in uh, Disney versus DeSantis. So just as a refresher, back in February of 2023, Ron DeSantis signed House Bill 9B, establishing the Central Florida Tourism Oversight Board as a replacement to Disney's longstanding Reedy Creek Improvement District, which, of course, ended all of the bunch of tax breaks and uh, powers that Disney held in Florida. Uh, Hours before the new board took control, Disney entered into last minute agreements with the Reedy Creek board to try and stop the new board from enforcing powers over the area. They sued. It was all this drama. And um, there were a lot of opponents of Ron DeSantis who said, ha ha, they've got him. He's not going to be allowed to do Disney's fighting back. Oh, well, fast forward to today. Disney has agreed to drop its lawsuit against Ron DeSantis, acknowledging the 11th hour deals it made with the outgoing Reedy Creek Improvement District are now null and void. So. Yeah, they probably can't afford the lawsuit after all the trash they're making, all the losses they're seeing at the box office. Yeah, you know, and also it turns out, at least in Florida, with, of course, Ron DeSantis, as you're talking about, the the strongest conservative governor in the country, Um Turns out when you do things like try to sexually indoctrinate children um, and confuse them, turns out you're held accountable in Florida. Yeah, hold on. I'm just going to, I'm going to take this moment. See that? Mm-hmm, I do. What, it, what is that? It's the world's smallest violin. <laughs> oh, and it's oh. playing for Disney right now. Yeah, look at that. Look at that sucker go. Yeah, no, I hope they go bankrupt. I do too. I think that they're they're an evil corporation. There I go. I said it. I mean, they have. There's look. I know people that work for them. I know that there's some really good people there, and I don't want that to impact them. They'll go and move because the people that I know are actually competent at what they do, and they'll go and they'll. Matt, go. it's the same thing with public schools. I want public schools to go. I I want them to be completely upended. I'm sure there are some good teachers there who I hope land on their feet, but that doesn't mean that the institution isn't rotted. 
from the inside out. It's just completely rotted. It's same thing with Disney. It's just it's just garbage and there's no fixing it because no matter how many people you have at a lower level who are good people or good at their jobs or whatever, the executives are making these decisions and it affects the entire company. Yeah, I mean, and he's making, I said this uh, actually today on something else that, that uh, Bob Iger is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So he doesn't really care. Like personally, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter to him whether the, whether the industry, wh whether the Disney fails or not, the industry rejects what he's putting out there. But I think what is really insidious about Disney is they have like, how many years of great material that was out there that everyone grew up and they really love it and it reminds them of their childhood and they want to share that with their kids. Yes. It's um, it, That's a real leverage, right? That's real leverage when you're looking at uh, future stuff because you don't want to say, no, my kids can never watch Bambi anymore. My kids can never watch Snow White. You don't want that. And I, I always remember growing up as well, going to Disney was the vacation. Like if you went to Disney, you'd made it. And now it's, well, you've seen the mess that it is there. It's not what it used to be. So until the, the power of, of the economy pressures them to change, they're not going to change. We keep talking about this, like you have to get involved. You have to get involved, whether that means not just boycotting, like what you, if you are on other people here that are watching this, do subscribe to The Blaze. But there's a reason why you need to subscribe and support channels like The Blaze because they are subscription only now. Like you have to do this. It's not enough just to say, I don't want to go and support this or buy that, buy that film because Disney, for example, they'll lose money, but they still have Snow White. They still have Mickey Mouse. They still have, you know, all these other things that are, are going to, they're forever going to make money. They are. It's whether you like it or not. Now, they might, it might cause them to shrink. It might cause them like they have already with Star Wars to stop making as much production. Mm -hmm. Like they, I think their movies have cut down. They were going to do three. Now there's one. Uh, the shows have certainly cut back. The MCU's cutting back. Uh, but really, what we need to do is support other things and give them an alternative. Like we said, an alternative yes. economy. Well, we're going to have a point where Disney will have to either choose their ideology or their or their bank account. Mm -hmm. They will have that moment. And I think the people have been very clear about what they're doing is not what they want to show their kids. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I mean, look at how all the Disney kids turned out, right? They're, they're Disney star actors. I mean, that right, that right there should have been enough information of who these people were at the core of them. Because those kids were around the people who were producing all these things. Yeah. And yeah. I just, I can't wrap my head around a stranger wanting to talk to my child about sex. This is really just what just... I, I don't. I, I don't want to talk to that. my kids about. You know, it's awkward for me. Why would a stranger want to? Yeah, they fight well. so hard to have these conversations with kids, yeah. trying to explain to them, you know, what non-binary is, and you can change your gender. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. What is what is the actual point behind that? Yeah, I, it really does. It it's infuriating to me because um, my older son. Disney had not gone crazy yet and got to experience Disney with us. And now my younger son, we're like, we don't know if we're ever going to be able mm -hmm. to take him. Yes. I mean, we're not going to as it is right now. So unless they get their acts together, which I, I don't, maybe they will. I mean, you got to believe that Universal is like, <laughs> well, 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 look what we have here. An opportunity to uh, one up you guys, because not only is Disney not going to have all of these tax breaks and anything like that anymore, or they don't anymore, um, people are rejecting them wholly uh, for the reasons that you guys are talking about. But there's an extra layer of like, they also started increasing their charges. They were charging to like breathe their oxygen. Mm -hmm. And you just can't do that at a time where everyone is struggling to make ends meet. They're barely being, they're barely able to pay their bills. Are they gonna, when they finally have, have gotten just barely enough to, to save, to go on a vacation, are they going to go to Disney for all of the all of those reasons? No, they won't. And so, I mean, maybe, maybe they'll change, but it we just pisses me off. We bought season passes to Universal. I think it was yeah. a few years ago. We bought seven passes to Universal. We went twice a month yeah. just to spite Disney. Because it's not <laughs> enough just to not give Disney money. You have to give their competition money. Right, right. And someone who will take them down a notch. Universal's expanding. they got a whole new park yep. they're building. Yep. Yep. And that's that's where we go. Um, anytime we go to an amusement park like that, that's where we go as Universal. And look, I'm not saying that they're perfect. 
Mm-hmm. They're not perfect. They said like uh, I'm sure that they still had, you know, rainbow stuff in their gift shops, but you're certainly not going to have your young daughter walk into a, a princess boutique being greeted by a man wearing makeup in a tutu. Yes. Well, you know, the other thing is you, you mentioned the prices and it's uh, for those of us with big families, right? They're pricing it's, you out. Well, it's $150, I think it is, or $125 for a ticket to go to, because I, I, I used to live in California, yeah. the communist state of California. So I have eight children, right? So that's 10 of us going to Disney. I, I'll let you do the math on that, right? And it doesn't matter how much money you make, yeah. right? It's th- That's a lot of money. And that is not what Walt Disney's vision no, was. Yes. It's What they're doing is they're pricing and we're seeing this, they're pricing families actually mm-hmm. out of going. Mm-hmm. And who can go? It's the people with disposable income. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, that's not big families, certainly not Christian big families that can go there that are already struggling to make ends meet. It is people from certain demographics that can afford it. I can't even imagine what your grocery bill is. <laughs> ours is uh, ours is almost $3,000 last Ooh. month five kids. It's almost twice, well, not almost twice, about one and a half times our mortgage, which is absolutely insane. Oh my we pay gosh. more for food than we do our mortgage. Wow. That's Joe Biden's America also, because you guys apparently don't know what causes children. <laughs> no, we do. That's why we have so many. <laughs> you do? Oh, well, I just... <sighs> <laughs> I don't really know how to end this. Well, now I, it got awkward. <laughs> no, because people always say to me, like, they're like, oh, you got eight kids. Do you have a television? Don't you have a television? I'm like, <laughs> I like the other thing more than watching <laughs> yeah. television, to be honest. Maybe you guys aren't doing it correctly, because when you do it correctly, it's actually really fun. Yeah. So maybe that's the problem. TV? <laughs> what is... <laughs> <What is that? laughs> um, all right. So, oh, by the way, last question on this. I know we have to take a break, but Disney adults, weird or not weird? Super weird. Very weird, right? Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. judging you. Unless you're just going to food and wine, which is completely acceptable. If you're going to the food and wine event, that's fine. Oh, is there a food and wine event There's there? a food and wine event. It's actually pretty amazing. They okay. bring in like, like like a million dollars worth of flowers. It's actually very beautiful. Okay. Well, I, I'll give, well, I won't give you a pass at all if you're conservative and you're going to Disney for any reason. But prior to that, I give you a pass just for food and wine. Otherwise, I do think it is very strange. Mm-hmm. Matt's, very weird. Matt has something on the. He's trying not to say. It, it, you know, it's just it's just very weird. Adults wearing the ears. That always strikes me as odd. It's weird. Okay. All right. I'm glad I'm not alone. I'm sorry if any of you are Disney. I'm sorry. I'm not judging you. I. You're, you're just weird. Yeah. It's not me judging. It's just an objective fact. I'll judge. Love you. Yeah. Be right back. <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that this next story, uh, we might lose you guys on YouTube at any given point in time. So if we do, make sure that you uh, subscribe to Blaze TV. You can use promo code Sarah for some savings uh, to catch the full episode there. Otherwise, I do believe the segment will be posted on Rumble, I'm told. So a male, trans-identifying male, just won in the women's division of the 2024 USA Weightlifting Masters Nationals, which uh, all happened over the weekend. He won with a total of nearly 240 kilos, beating the second place finisher by nearly 100 pounds. I, for one, am shocked. Hmm. Shocked, I tell you, that a biological male would beat a woman in a competition of strength. I'm shocked. What? 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 (laughs) Where to start with this? I always love the podium picture where it's so obvious this is this is a dude. Yeah, let's there it is. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's really similar to the Leah Thomas. Now I'm a capitalist and there's a market in here. You need to start Ooh. making trans podiums where like the number one that's usually really high, just make it lower <laughs> to two and three. And that way maybe you're guessing. I really wish that those pants were Looser. I really wish that I never saw that picture either. Oh, good God. I really wish I could unsee any of this. Do you know, here's the thing. I'm all for it now. And do you know why? <laughs> no, I'm genuinely because the women are enabling this. Because You're right. they keep doing yeah. it. Again, I'm going to go on about getting involved. If you are going into a competition where there is a biological man that's competing against you, don't 
Compete. I know. I know. All right. You've got to not do it. Like it doesn't matter. We can go on all we want. And, you know, again, where are the feminists? You know, where, where, where are they? They're, they're just absent. Right. So all I want to do is I want to see every single person that when they see a guy walk in, this isn't, this is, he, this is masters, right? So this is older, but certainly when it comes to the kids, like, what are the parents doing? Why aren't the parents stopping them? Why aren't the kids refusing? No. Why aren't the coaches coming? They're all a bunch of wimps. That's what it comes down to. They're afraid. It is so strange to know that all of these feminists fought for so long for women. They're like, we, there's a gender pay gap. We get paid the less. There's like five cents less than all the males and we deserve more. And like all of this, you know, everything was sexist and, you know, the Me Too movement and all of this. And they fought for so long. Some of them were like kind of retarded about it, but they fought for so long for women's rights. And now they're just like, men can be women if they want to. They can beat us at our own game. They can join. They can actually, actually, we're living at a time where we have women who call themselves feminists saying, yeah, he can beat the shit out of a woman in a competition. He can beat her up, literally bash her skull in all in the name of I don't know what. It's very strange. So I it's, think it's, women should just have sports that are as good at then. They need new leagues, like maybe sandwich making or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I will say... <laughs> I, my older son was taught we were talking about basketball with March Madness going on and he's like um are the men's basketball games more popular and I was like yes honey nobody likes women's basketball not even women okay change the channel <laughs> Do you know I had a, a, I was having this discussion with my friend Tim Clemente and he was in a, a barbecue mm. joint I don't know if I've told you this but he was mm. in a barbecue joint and they had Wimbledon on and there was like the the women's were you know is higher up earlier on right so I think it was Serena Williams who was awesome right she was playing and then there were two guys playing that were way 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 lower ranked and you know not really well known and after a while they just switched off the women's game and started watching the men's because it's so much more aggressive mm -hmm. it's so much more powerful and it's more dramatic to watch it just is and people lie if they say that I mean I can appreciate watching the women's final i love watching like serena williams well, i appreciate it but you're always going to gravitate towards the more powerful the more dramatic the more the stronger things i think but but look it stops when you guys decide yeah. that it stops mm -hmm. it is on us that's it it's nobody else's fault but ours we shouldn't let our kids participate in it you shouldn't if you are in a race, like there was the cycling as well, you've all got to say, I'm not doing it. And I understand there's a lot of time put into this. And I understand there's a lot of, you know, people train for years and years and years sometimes to get there. But that's why it has to stop. And that's why, you know, Riley Gaines has been mm -hmm. incredible, right, coming out and a against it. It's yeah. one of the rare There's moments. part of me that thinks that the big push for this is to bring more money and sponsors into women's sports. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Like, because at the end of it, they just they want to make more money. There's not a lot of money in female sports right now. There aren't, right? And that they, they would be this so openly. wild to just be like backdoor, just, I know what we'll do is we'll bring a bunch of men, but that but they won't be successful because nobody's going to watch a man beating a bunch of women and be like, oh man, that was a close one. But here she we are, almost had him. Here we are talking about it. Right. But then it'll be all men. So there right. won't be any women's right. sports. Right. So it won't be women's sports. Look, currently there's also a caveat I think that people are missing. It makes it very easy to bet on women's sports. Right? <laughs> Just always bet on balls. You're gonna you're gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> balls. I um so one more thing to this. They they previously they had a, a rule that Males had to show uh, that they had undergone hormone therapy for at least two years to minimize gender related competition advantages, which if we could just pull um, the beautiful that beautiful woman up there again, boy, he almost had me fooled <laughs> that, ho that he's that is an estrogen taking beautiful woman right there. I was almost fooled into thinking that he was a woman. It just looks so close. Well, uh, they removed the hormone level requirements for uh, 
transgender weightlifters who want to compete at events like the Olympics. Now, I want to read you guys the committee's reasoning. They said, this framework recognizes both the need to ensure that everyone, irrespective of their gender identity or sex variations, can practice sport in a safe, harassment-free environment that recognizes and respects their needs and identities. Again, I will just say, if you didn't want to specifically target women, you could just come up with a trans league. That would be that would be safe harassment free environment. That would be safe for all parties because then we wouldn't have women getting the shit beat out of them. That would be very easy to do if it was not about just taking down women. Tell me how that would not satisfy. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, and look, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is it doesn't matter whether or not you've been taken or, or taken hormones for the past two years because we what? all know you didn't think that that was a woman right there. I was. You were on the fence. I did some ugly women in the past. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, I'm not going to. No, no it's bad. just that, that, you know, the, the, a male skeleton is more dense than a female skeleton. Right. It just is. Right. The hips are different. Yeah, we know this because if you, you know, the, the whole thing people say, if you dig up a female skeleton you you dig mm -hmm. up a male skeleton, you can see immediately there's a difference. So, I mean, there's clearly a difference anyway, regardless. Uh, the whole thing is absurd. I'm absolutely sick to death of it. It's it, it, this just... This is where it goes. This is people think that it's not going to go any further than where it is right now, but it is, and it's going to keep going and going and going and going and going. I don't know what's next, but I don't know where this stops unless people say this is blatantly absurd. We've got to stop this ridiculous pandering and and this bullshit word salad that they come out with. It's like Kamala Harris like mm -hmm. writes all of these things. Right. We could we could we women could stop it tomorrow. All you have to do is stand up and say no more. That's it. That's all you have to do. All right. We got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more. But, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, we're talking about the Disney situation and we're talking about, you know, participating in the parallel economy and using your money to go see, I don't know, woke free entertainment. Might I suggest Cabrini? OK, uh, it's got a 98 percent audience score, 91 percent critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's very rare that the two agree, the audience and the critics agree that it's a really great movie. So it's based on a true story of one woman's fight for equality, health and happiness of immigrant orphans. This is from the award winning director of Sound of Freedom. And it is about Francesca. Matt, judge my judge my Italian accent. Okay. Francesca Cabrini. How was that? <laughs> <laughs> it's marvelous, darling. He's lying to me. He's lying to me. That's okay. You need to go see it anyway, okay? Um, it's Like I said, everyone who I've talked to has loved it. Make sure you go. It's in theaters now, and you can purchase your tickets in advance online. Participate in the parallel economy. You can go to angel.com slash Sarah. That is angel.com slash Sarah. Speaking of participating in the parallel economy and, you know, supporting uh, conservatives, I'd just like to take this time to tell everyone that Matt Marsden has started a YouTube channel. And uh, you should subscribe. You should. He's, I agree with this message. He's spreading all the, ever, all the Hollywood secrets, all these people who are just like pieces of garbage. He's outing all. I don't know. I don't think he's actually doing that. <laughs> no, he no. might. Well, I might. I might if you subscribe. You need to go. Here's the thing. It's free. Like, just go do it. It is free. And, is free. and, and the truth of the matter is, it's kind of like a thought experiment because if, if people out there are not willing to click on a button to support someone that's coming out and has their ideals, has their values, mm -hmm. then they're not going to go out and protest about these bigger things. It's as right. simple as that. Yeah. So, well, thank you for that. Yeah. So make sure and then follow Adam here on social media. Uh, the lectern guy who is you you're very funny on Twitter. Well, thanks. I have a good time there. Yeah, it's great I'm glad that you could join us and we will see you guys tomorrow